Hi everyone, I'm Chris Holbert and welcome to the second screencast in the Swift Education series. Swift Education is a curriculum created by Yong Bakos, a university professor, and um, in this screencast series I'll show you how to uh, get through this. So firstly, you'll want to go to swifteducation.github.io, which I've already done. Click on Teaching App Development in Swift. And today's video is going to be Word Collage, Word Collage Lesson 2. So you'll want to download the lesson plan and the Xcode project. I've already downloaded those, so let's get stuck in. So here's the lesson plan. And today we're going to learn about Auto Layout. So Auto Layout is how you lay out things on the screen so that when you rotate your device, they end up in a sensible location. So here's the downloaded project files. Just double click on the Xcode project to fire that up in Xcode. Great, here we are. All right, we'll use the project map navigator. That's command one. And we'll find the main storyboard. Here we go. Notice how it's laid out in a square screen. I'll just close this so you can see a bit better. Notice how it's laid out square. This is because you're laying it out so that it can work in both landscape and portrait mode. So it wouldn't make much sense for this to be in any particular shape. So they've gone for a neutral square. And so let's run this. You can either click play or you can hit command R. You should probably do command R to get the hang of the keyboard shortcuts. Great. Here we've got the simulator all up and running. Now notice that, of course, the simulator is a the shape of a normal iPhone, e.g. it is um, portrait mode. And this is different to the square that you see in the storyboard in the background. However, if you rotate, all the text shuffles around, but it still fills the area. Now this is because of the concept of adaptive user interfaces. And the basic gist of it is that your layout of all your labels and other controls on the screen adapts to the orientation of the device or the size of the device even because, for instance, the iPhone 6 Plus has a lot more real estate and the iPhone 4S, which you can still have to worry about because that can run up to iOS 9, I believe. It's a lot smaller than the iPhone 6 Plus and the iPhone 6 is somewhere in the middle. Okay, let's add a new label and play around with its layout. So I will quit the simulator, Command-Q. Notice that the stop button has grayed out. That because, that's because Xcode has figured out that the simulator isn't currently running. Great, now to add a new object, you can find it through the right-hand utilities area, or you can use Alt-Command-L. Again, I'm going to encourage keyboard shortcuts. Now down the bottom right, this is where your library is. So we'll expand that up and let's search for labels. We could scroll through this, it will take a while. Let's just search. Brilliant. Let's plonk that in the middle and uh, let's change its text to learn to code apps. Let's change the font to something more interesting. Let's get more options. Let's go for custom. Now we're talking. Look at all these options. Papyrus. Why not? And let's crank the size right up. Now notice that it's got a dot dot dot. That's because the label doesn't quite fit its text. And so rather than truncate harshly, it does a dot dot dot, which is slightly better. All right, let's position this in what we think to be the middle and run it and see what happens. Notice it's uh, off to the right. It's not really centered, is it? And if you rotate the simulated device, you can do that by doing command left and right. It's uh, now it's left of center. So this isn't quite right. And um, the issue is that we haven't actually set any constraints. What we need to do is set a constraint on that label so that it's centered. And uh, we'll go into that now. Okay, now we're going to set up our first constraint on this label. 
So let's make sure the label is selected. And uh, this is the pin control down here. Now, most people just call it the TIE Fighter. I can, I'm sure you can figure out why. And now let's give it a constraint to the top of the screen. Let's make it 20 points from the top and click this little red bar. So put in the 20 again, and that enables that constraint. Now this isn't committed or added until you click the button down here. So we'll add that constraint. Now notice how it's added a orange bar. What that means is there's a constraint, but the actual position of the view on the screen doesn't actually uh, meet up with what the constraint says it should be. So what we'll do, we'll select the label, click on the down here and click on update frames. And that has updated the label so that it is where its constraints say it should be. And notice how it's gone blue. See this little line above it? That's the constraint. Now it's gone blue. However, we haven't given a constraint to determine where it should be in the x-axis, as in left and right. So it has got this red line here, which kind of hints that it doesn't really know where to position it, so it just puts it at the left. So now let's uh, give it a horizontal alignment. So we'll make sure that it's selected again. Now we're going to click on the align control down here. And let's make its horizontal center be in its container. Now we'll make it zero is fine because that means its offset is zero according to its container. Now that's great. Now as you can see, there's this dotted line here that's kind of hinting that's where I really want to be. So we can update the frame, Bob's your uncle. Now, if you run the app, it'll always be centered and always be 20 from the top. Let's see that in action. So as you can see, when the iPhone is in landscape mode, it's centered. Also, when you are in portrait mode, it is also centered. So there we go, we've set up a couple of constraints and the label now is always centered and always near the top. That's great. Great, now I'm going to show you how to resolve auto layout issues. So let's drag this label out so that it's not where its constraints say it should be. See how there's a little orange arrow here? If we click on that, it'll tell you that there are misplaced views. Now that is what I was telling you before about how the view isn't where its constraints say it should be. So if I click on that, then click down here on the triangle, update frames, it's where it wants to be. And notice we've now got a nice message that says no auto layout issues. Once you uh, get quite good with developing apps, you'll love, learn to love that message. We can click back and now we can see our document outline and um, everyone's happy. There's no little arrow here saying there's a problem. Now, if you can't see this document outline here, look out for this icon here. That's the one you want to click to make it open and close. Great. Great, thanks for watching. See you next time.